Hello there again, everybody. I want to talk a little bit more about this really cool knife. This is the uh, the Fox Bastinelli Design Dragotech Slim Piemontes Friction Folder. I think that's way too many names for a uh, knife name, but uh, whatever. I think maybe they should have just stuck with uh, Dragotech or Slim Bastinelli Friction Folder. But anyway, uh, here it is. Uh, I unboxed this the other day in a video and showed you guys what this looks like coming out of the box, but um, I've carried a little bit now and I kind of want to talk about it. It's uh, it's really a cool knife. Um, this is the first friction folder that I've owned and so it's a little different for me, but um, super cool. Uh, this guy is just a really nice little knife. It's it's super lightweight, something you can't tell you know in the video, but uh, it just is very light. The scales are FRN, they're not very heavy, and uh, as you can see it balances right behind the pivot in that little finger choil there. Um, and some of the nice features on this knife. Um, first of all, the cutting edge goes all the way back down to the base. Now it's a little bit wider right down in there at that at the, at the end of the where the plunge cut is. Um, and when I was sharpening this the other day, you know, I didn't want to get too aggressive with the Lansky, so I, I, I've got it most of the way sharpened down there, but there's a little bit of the original grind left in this area that I need to, to sharpen up. So probably what I'll do is disassemble the knife clamp it in the Blansky and then uh, go at it that way with the handle scales removed. But at this point it's really sharp over most of the blade length. Um, now, cool aspects of this knife. If you look in the back there, the little backspacer, um, I don't know what you want to call them, pins or um, just backspacers are actually, they're kind of um, a cool shape. They're, they're uh, kind of uh, tapered in in the middle of the pin. And so they're not just a cylinder, they're actually kind of a nice architectural shape there, which really looks nice. It's really kind of a nice detail. Uh, there's not a lot going on in the back of this knife. As you can see, it's just a straight shot right through there. And there's no liners, it's just FRN all the way through. It's a friction folder, so they don't need any strength for a lock or anything like that. Um, so having these uh, spacers have that nice shape to them really adds a nice visual detail. And they're polished, they look really good. Uh, tang of the knife um, is, it's got some jimping along the back here. Um, now I, I personally think that that jimping maybe probably, uh, I would say it should be further back uh, just because where it's at on the knife, if you if you press there, you're actually going to kind of close it a little bit. So I guess if you're cutting, it's fine, but uh, I would have said that maybe the jimping should have come back a little further, be positioned a little further back just to kind of encourage you to keep your thumb back kind of behind the pivot, um, just as a safety thing. Um, but if you take a look, the, the tang of the knife is beautifully radiused all along the, the top here and even along the underside. It's got a, it's nice, all the, all the sharp edges have been knocked off. Um, it's got a really pronounced radius along the top. Bottom side is radius, but not as much. So it's just, it feels really good. Everything about it feels very nice and smooth and finished. Um, when I first got the knife, I didn't think it had the, the steel type marked on it, but it actually does. It's got the uh, the Bowler N690 etched into the into the underside of the tang, and the uh, the country manufacturer, which of course is Italy. So you can see that in there. I'm, I'm not sure if this will show up on the, the camera. I'll try and get some close-up pictures later and maybe, uh, you know, cut to those. But uh, yeah, so the steel type is marked on the blade. And then uh, the other thing that was, uh, that's interesting is that they've got the, let's see, they've got the Fox Knives logo, but I don't think they have, I guess it's a combination um, Fox and Bastinelli logo, so that's interesting. So it's actually like the Fox logo combined with the little three slashes of the Bastinelli logo, so that's that's kind of an interesting thing to have it combined in one uh, one mark on the, on the presentation side of the blade, as opposed to having, you know, like the maker and the steel on the back side of the blade. They just put it all in one place. Um, the pivot is really nicely polished on both sides, the pivot screw and the, the um, female side of the pivot really look good. And I'm just telling you, this is a really, it feels really good in hand. It's a, it's a really nice knife to hold and to use. And uh, like I say, the, the, the finish on the tang and everything just really adds to that. So, oh, and then up at the uh, forward of the, of the jumping, Again, the top, the spine of the blade is is radiused as well, so it has a really nice feel to it. It's uh, very nicely finished. So, I guess you know why I'm talking about that so much is that this is a you know it's a friction folder. So really, you know what do you got? You got two scales, 
the back spacers, some screws, and then some bushings, and then the blade. And so there's really not much to it. Um, so, you know, so what are you getting for your money? Well, first of all, the steel is decent. It's nothing fancy, but it's decent. Um, but the thing that really makes it nice for me is just the fact that they did put that effort into finishing the back of the blade. You know, this is radius nicely and polished, and same thing with the tang. Uh, just very nicely finished off. So it just it gives it a really a nice feel to it. So, um, you know, where it could have come out, come across as like a really cheap, like a like a peasant knife or something like that, the fact that it is um, kind of polished off and finished like that makes it feel very nice. Now, one thing I do have a question about is the uh, the lanyard hole down here at the bottom of the knife. There's nothing wrong with it. It would work just fine. But my question would be, in what case would you put a lanyard on this? Because you really can't put it in your pocket with the tang down. It's going to stab in your pocket and poke a hole in no time. Um, and the sheath that comes with it is really just a pouch. And the knife only goes in there the one way. It just drops in like that. So having a, uh, a lanyard on here would preclude use of the pouch. So it's kind of interesting. Now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm also kind of curious why they didn't put maybe a, a belt loop or a couple slots in the back of this pouch because then it would, it would increase the number of carry options that you have for it. Uh, nothing wrong with it the way it is. It actually drops into my pocket really well and carries very nicely. Just sits in there with my keys and everything. And I really don't notice it. It's, it's surprisingly, you know, despite the, the fact that it looks kind of big just sitting in the pouch, because it is kind of an oval shape, it sits in the pocket very nicely, so you can carry it no problem. Um, I'm thinking about making a sheath for it myself out of some leather and uh, and put a belt loop on it. And at that point, I mean, I could go either way. You could either put this in there, um, tip down, or really honestly, if you if you put a little hole in the bottom of the sheath and designed it right, you could make a, a tip up carry sheath that would uh, go you know inside your pocket or outside the pocket, belt loop whatever, and then you could in fact make use of this lanyard hole but it's just kind of a funny thing um, having this lanyard hole in here with with the design of the, the pouch sheath that comes with it so and, and it's it's a friction folder too so it's like it's not like you'd um, I guess you could carry this in your pocket just bare like this it'd be okay put a lanyard on there but I'd be worried that it would open up so you know it's it's there's just nothing keeping it there's no detent there's nothing keeping it closed so I think you would definitely kind of want to keep it in the pouch or in a sheath now if it was just a desk knife if you just had this you know in a desk drawer or you know workbench whatever and you put a lantern on it i guess <laughs> but it's interesting i mean it's, it's good there's a hole there it does kind of add a little bit of a visual detail at the back end of the handle whereas otherwise it would be just kind of plain maybe that'd be better i don't know but um otherwise great little knife uh, i really like it it's um it's just I, every time I look at it, I'm kind of excited by the way it looks and feels. It's so light. It just it's like uh, and usually I prefer a heavier knife, but this actually with that lightweight feel, it just feels very fast and uh, light and maneuverable. It's almost like a like an exacto or a scalpel type thing. Just really cool, like a like a kiridashi except folding, and with a much longer blade. <laughs> um, Anyway, overall, uh, really cool. Um, just a just a super neat little knife. And if you're looking at getting a friction folder, this is a this is a cool one to get. It's um, a really nice design. It's uh, it, it, the, the design of it kind of fits the fact that it's a friction folder. It's not like they uh, just took kind of a, a standard looking knife and put a you know a friction folder tang on it. It's it's actually a, a design that kind of comes together really nicely as a whole and you know as a purpose designed friction folder. So anyway, um, there it is. It's the Fox Bastinelli Design Dragotech Slim Piemontes Friction Folder. Uh, they make another one too that's a little bit wider, which I think this is why this is when it's designated the Slim. Uh, it's shorter and has a broader blade, I think. Um, and it doesn't, to me, it doesn't look as graceful. It's still a cool knife, but it doesn't look as, as elegant and as graceful as this one. So anyway, if you like this video, um, please comment. If you didn't like it, comment too. I'll answer and. Uh, you know, I'm looking for suggestions on how to improve, and if you like, please subscribe to the channel if you like this, and I hope to follow up with more knife reviews and reviews and comments on bicycle equipment in the future. Thank you very much for watching.